So, uh, I've been working with Ross for the last five or six years now. I was there at the beginning, I was at Willow Garage um, at the very beginning, and I've put Ross on a lot of different robots. Um, the Pier 2 took up a lot of my time, but I also have written Ross drivers for small robots and that makes them very good for talking about Rossifying robots. So why would you want to Rossify a robot? Um, Ross provides a lot of tools and capability for you. Um, visualization, introspection, configurability, standards, sensor drivers, and high level apps like Move It like we saw at the keynote yesterday. So where would you start when you're Rossifying a robot? Um, I would really recommend coloring by numbers. Um, uh, copying is kind of the best form of flattery. Uh, so basically go to ross.org, to the wiki, and look at the robots, and pick a robot that's kind of close to yours, and look at the package structure, the different drivers, the URDF models that they're using, things like that, um, and kind of follow their pattern, because it's going to do you a lot and save you a lot of time. Um, so this is what the nodes look like for Sphero. Sphero is a very, very simple robot. Um, all you need is the driver and a ROS wrapper around it, a URDF, which is pretty simple because it's a ball, and uh, you know a couple other tools in ROS, so uh, Robot Pose EKF and Diagnostic Aggregator and Robot State Publisher. Um, so before you start, though, um, with even something as simple as a Sphero, there's lots of drivers in the ROS ecosystem. You should really Google it first. Your robot might already exist, so you can save yourself some time. Uh, second, write a standalone driver. Um, a lot of people, they jump into ROS and they're like, I am gonna ROS this thing up. And you know what? You're not doing anyone a favor um, because you actually wanna create barriers between your different ROS nodes so that your dependency tree doesn't become monstrous. Uh, you can end up with a dependency tree where you have to download all of ROS to do anything with your robot, even if it's something like a Sphero. Um, and then don't copy, okay? Um, there, I seriously think there's about 200 copies of joy.py in ROS. I mean, it's crazy. Because all you're doing is making more work for yourself. It, it doesn't matter because it's all BSD. If you copy it, great. But the thing is, is when someone patches that code or improves it, you're not getting the benefits of it. And then you have to go in and patch it. And if you look at Ross Answers, there's a lot of that. People copy code and then someone asks a question and it's like, oh, but that was fixed in this other version of the driver. Don't do it. Okay, so the basics. Um, probably the first thing you want to do when you are Rossifying a robot is get a URDF. Um, it's fun to see your robot moving around, things like that. Uh, if you have a SOLIDWORKS model of your robot, I would definitely suggest using the URDF exporter. It's an awesome tool. Uh, Steven's giving a talk at 3.30 and he's also got a bird of feather soon. So go look for it, attend it. Um, oh. It got cut off. Uh, Joint State Publisher is really an awesome tool for debugging uh, URDFs. It basically lets you fake all the joints of your robot so you can like move it around and get a sense for what's going on without having to have your hardware up and running, which sometimes can be a bear. Um, if you don't already know about it, Robot State Publisher is the thing that helps you do almost everything in terms of TF and ROS. So basically, Robot State Publisher takes in your URDF and then generates your TF frames for you. And then all you have to do from your robot driver is publish joint states. Um, there's a message in ROS, so you can look that up. So when it doesn't work, this is one of the great things about ROS, is there's tons of introspection. Um, you should use the tools that are provided. They're really great. Um, uh, Ross, uh, or R RQT graphs, sorry, I'm, I'm uh, struggling because everything changed names in the last couple of revisions. It used to be RX graph. Um, is really good for looking at what nodes are running in your system and whether or not they're connected. A lot of times what happens when you're starting to Rossify a robot is you mistype the topic name and then your subscriber and publisher don't connect. And a really quick way to debug that is by using RQT graph. Um, another thing that commonly happens is uh, TF frame problems, either misnaming or 
uh, confusion or they're not getting published. TF has a lot of great tools for understanding what's going wrong with your TF frames and your model. Um, and then finally, there's Ross Where's the Fire, or, well, as, as you may commonly know, it's something else. Um, Ross WTF is a great tool. It's really good for helping when you, um, when you're having network connectivity issues or you may have uh, started a master on a different port. Um, thanks to Morgan, it's a uh, palindrome, so 11311. Um, but <laughs> in case you want to go for something else like 44244, that's fine. Um, so as your robots get more and more complicated, you start getting more and more nodes. Um, this is the turtle bot. So if you, if you remember the Sphero, Basically all I added was the OpenNI. Um, a lot of robots follow the same pattern in architecture for their node layouts and their node connections. Um, and so you'll see that a lot, of, um, a lot of robots should look like this, or I hope they'll look like this. It, it's good when they are kind of the same. Pier 2 kind of looks like this. So, um, so when things start going wrong in a robot, as they get more complex, you should use diagnostics and you should um, use the robot monitor. So the reason I'm talking about the robot monitor is I have talked to at least 10 people uh, using their robots and they're like, oh, I really wish I had this way of looking at the diagnostics coming out of my robot. And I'm like, oh, you should use robot monitor. And they're like, what? Never heard of it. So robot monitor is really cool. Uh, after you, you use the diagnostic aggregator to basically use a configuration file to make your robot monitor look pretty. Um, basically it creates drop downs and other, um, I guess, classifications for diagnostics. Um, if, if you have questions about that, ask me later. Uh, another thing, when starting to Rossify a robot, know the standards. There are reps. They tell you how the unit standards are, what the um, standards are for coordinate frames, uh, driver name spacing, things like that. They're important. And I don't know how many times I've seen this question on Ross Answers. It's really hilarious. It's what are the units of measure in Ross? And it's amazing that very few people find the reps. There are reps and they will help you to do things properly in Ross and so that you're compatible. And don't get creative. Um, these are standard topic names and messages that are used in Ross. And the point of Ross is to be uh, configurable, extendable, but it's also meant to be compatible. When you, when you make robots, you want to be able to share the code. And if you start using creative names like Ogermetric Frame or something weird like that, you're not leveraging the, the compatibility with other people's software. So I've talked a lot about mobile bases, um, and in the TurtleBot, uh, there's there's uh, something about arms. And the thing is, is the big thing that you need to expose for arms is um, a joint trajectory action, basically. So in the TurtleBot, we used to have a simple arm server that did the kinematics and then sent it to the base controller board, and it moved the arm. But today, you could probably just send in a goal and to move it, and it spits out a joint trajectory action. And that's one of the great advantages to following the standards and following the naming conventions. Because before that, we developed all this stuff. We developed it almost two years ago in electric. And now, today, move it here, and we can just drop it in. So that's one of the powerful things about following standards and using the conventions. Finally, um, the most important thing, um, or at least I feel it's the most important thing about all robots, about ROS in general, is documentation. If, if you want anyone to use your stuff, you need to document it. Um, document the Node APIs, document it, it through tutorials, make sure it's easy for people to use. And if you're really diligent, get someone who knows nothing about ROS, knows nothing about your robot, and have them go through your tutorials. Um, it really helps, and it's what keeps ROS going and makes it such a great community. Um, so that was my short talk. I really wanted to make it um, more available for questions if people have questions about ROSifying robots. Thanks.